director, Jody London, is now a veteran on the Oakland Board of Education. She has been a pioneer for greening the district and a lot of great programs that have happened here since she went from the PTA to the school board. We're excited to have Director London back just to tell us somewhat about her journey and her experience now that she knows quite a deal about Oakland and also tell us what her vision is for Oakland for this school year and some of the exciting things that are happening in her district, which is District 1. Director London, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You know, it's two elections and you are now one of the yes. veterans of the board. I'm in I my mean, sixth year on the board. Right. And we just found out uh, the other night that we're going to have three turnovers, three directors stepping down oh this my year. Goodness. So um, districts two, four, and six will all have new directors come January. So it will be an entirely new board. It pretty much, yeah. New superintendent, all new. Everything new. Yeah, new. That's yeah, true. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. I mean, it's been an evolution to come to that. I mean, it's, yes. there's been subtle changes, but now this will be the, I guess, the most changes in one year. Yes, but we're, we're very excited. I mean, uh, Superintendent Wilson is very committed to the strategic direction mm -hmm. that we've set out as a board around community schools and thriving students. And I believe that, um, I'm very hopeful that when our new colleagues join us in January, they'll share our vision for how we're going to move the district forward. Yeah, that'll be wonderful. Um, how does that transition work? Is it just like you, in January you're all just together and now well, you have to the start? Well, the board, we're, we're actually working internally on what a transition plan will mm -hmm. look like, making sure that we give our colleagues a lot of resources and support. When that'll I joined the board six years ago, I was not an education insider. I, I work in the energy industry by day. so. I had a lot of learning to do. The learning curve is pretty steep. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of jargon and new systems to learn and a lot of new people to meet. So we want to make sure that we help them along as much as we can. Yeah, because Director Harris was here and we were talking. I was like, you know, with board members, when you start in January, you may be voting on something that you weren't a part of initially and now you have to be brought up to speed well, I've quickly. Been, and I've been encouraging the candidates as I meet with them to start coming to board meetings mm -hmm. and really paying attention to what the That's issues true. are. When I was elected in 2008, we were still having a primary in Oakland. Mm -hmm. So I was elected in a June primary and I was able to come observe the board between July, June and January oh, right. when I took office. So, Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. That, would, that would make a, quite a bit of difference. Right. So tell us, you, you're always come, pushing an exciting initiative in Oakland, like the green and the all the energy efficiency that's going around in the district. Is that still just your focus or do you have some other areas no, that you're I, actually I'm, looking I'm, into? I mean, my goal for the next year I was thinking about this is really to make sure that Superintendent Wilson has a really strong first year. Mm -hmm. Make sure that we offer him the supports and make sure he has what he needs to do his job because really the job of the school board is to hire the superintendent and make sure that he's able or she is able to do their job uh, the best that they possibly can. So I'm very focused on that and then of course this transition with the new board members coming in um, there's a parcel tax that's going to be mm, on the ballot mm -hmm. in November that would fund pathway programs, career pathway programs in our high school. So not in my school board role, but as a member of the community, I'll be working to support um, the passage of that parcel tax as well because it would really make a huge difference mm -hmm. for our kids. Uh, and then I'm personally very interested in working with the community to bring in an organization that can help us better work with business philanthropy mm -hmm. and community-based organizations in support of our goals. I think right now it's a little bit challenging for organizations to access the school district, mm -hmm. figure out how to get in too much. It's kind of, do you know someone? Mm -hmm. Can you figure out an angle at this school? But we want those opportunities available across the city to all right. our students. So. That's something I've been um, working on quite a bit this past year and just kind of pushing along, see how it goes. So, so what's going on in District 1? There's always something exciting There's always there. something yeah. in District 1. We've uh, had uh, we have some new leaders coming in at some of our schools. Um, Sankofa is expanding to be a K-8 program. So oh, that great. I think we're going to be moving ahead with some construction there. Uh, we did a lot of work um, and still going on around making sure that our playing fields are available to the many mm -hmm. different sports that our students play. So we have an amazing baseball field called the Ricky Henderson Field of Dreams. It's located on the campus of Oakland International High School right. where a lot of the kids are more familiar with soccer. Mm -hmm. So we recently brought together um, representatives from each of the schools and some of the community groups and they've worked out a solution where we're going to be able to have a soccer practice field at that site um, and then make sure that the Oakland International teams are able to play on the field at Oakland Tech which is where they have been playing. Um, 
There's going to be probably a softball field going in at Emerson Elementary. And then all of our schools are doing amazing work academically. I could go on and on and it would take the whole right. hour. So There's always some good, something good going on in your district to, sh to share. Now taking your board member hat off and putting your parent hat on, how can you help, because you have students in the Oakland Public Schools, how can you help parents with their engagement in schools, I in think, public schools, you know, navigating the system? It, this is actually something that school districts across the state are being held more accountable for. With the local control funding formula, part of that um, includes stronger parent and community engagement. So all of our schools are thinking a lot about that. I would encourage parents to get to know your um, child's teacher. It gets harder when your kids are in middle school and high school. First of all, the kids don't really want you there. And secondly, they have more teachers to work with. But there's always, uh, almost always a school, at every school there's a site, school site council, and that is a great way to learn how the money is being spent and what the principal and uh, the other leaders in the school, particularly on the instructional side, view as priorities and to help influence that. Um, and then the parent-teacher groups are so important. You know, we are still being funded in California at levels from about six years ago. Mm. So um, the funding is wholly inadequate. Mm -hmm. the, the stuff that we fight over, that people are upset over, do we have libraries, do we have counselors, do we have you know, different um, enrichment programs. In other states, mm -hmm. they have all those things because they, they are willing to fund education mm -hmm. at a higher level. And California has not shown that will. And we used to have that years ago. I mean, and we know how it makes a difference. Right, so yeah. that's something also that I'm pretty interested in is just figuring out how we exert more pressure in Sacramento mm -hmm. to direct more resources per pupil to our kids because our kids are our future in the state. That's true, that's true. And where, with, with, out, as California go, there goes the rest of the country. Right. So we, if we do well, then America's doing well. Moving back a little bit to the green stuff, though, I think it's worth talking about the fact that over the summer, we have been installing solar panels mm. on 17 of our school sites. When it's all done, we're going to have four megawatts of solar here in Oakland Incredible. Unified, which is one of the, a pretty large solar installation for a school system. It's going to help us reduce our utility bill, mm. send that money back into the classroom. So, Perfect. Yeah. I think that was a great note to end on. That's perfect to Thank say you. the solar and how it translates to saving money and putting it back in the classroom. Exactly. Well, great job. I, I, I just admire your your progress just to see you st start on the school board and now go. you were president at a point and vice president, and now you're always in some leadership role on the board, and we do appreciate you. Thank you. Thank Glad you. to be here. Good. You've been watching Spotlight with Shonda Scott. Today, our spotlight was on Director Jody London of the Oakland Unified School Board, where every student thrives. Thank you for joining us.